What's up, guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Eat the Dead Chart. Yo, check out what I got going on this photo. I know it looks crazy and hilarious, but stay with me for a second here. Okay, I got to break down some crazy stuff that I found out, right? There's this huge article about the human nasal cycle. As you know, if you follow my channel, I love fitness. I love traveling the world. I love breath work. I love CrossFit. And if you know that I probably, if you know about me, I fell off this uh, motorcycle, right? twice it was a scooter okay in mexico it's there's it's a big story it's a, it's a pretty complicated story i get it but i was just thinking you know i come across these articles recently because i'm studying breath work now recognizing that the human nasal cycle we switch flows in our nostrils during the day and what is fascinating is that this can actually impact um brain function depending on if one side is too dominant okay now this is super fascinating they, they recognize that they need to do some more research on this this was in 2016 um I'm, i'll be honest i'm not sure if i got to find any more other research on this um but just think about this the nasal cycle is related to an autonomic autonomic arousal this is kind of like automatic stress response arousal right and is indicative of asymmetry in brain function Okay, moreover, alternations in nasal cycle periodicity have been linked to various diseases. There is therefore need for a tool allowing continuous accurate measurement and recording of airflow in each nostril separately. All right, so this is so interesting because if you think about yoga and Nadi, Nadi Shodhana, or how do they spell it? In yoga, they always work on alternate nostril, nostril breathing, and it's supposed to help align what they refer to as the prana, right? The breath is the prana or energy. And if you want to just put that in Western scientific terms, it's basically a, a alignment in the energies in the brain, basically is what they're trying to say. Because we know that this nasal cycle can be indicative of a symmetry in brain function, all right? So I'm just thinking, you know, when I was, before I fell off my motorcycle, I'll get into my story a little bit deeper with this. Holy, it's just, it's so crazy when I just think of the eye of Horus, when I think of my eye right here uh, needing to be trained, when I think of just when I was in Egypt, look at the statue of Ramsey II. This statue is huge. Dude, it is giant, and this is a giant granite block, okay? I don't know how, dog, they were doing this. Dude, it looks like it's like I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to throw any major theories out there right now. I'm not really trying to get into that, but it's it's fascinating. It's super impressive. Like, do we even do stuff like this in modern eras? Not really, <laughs> dude. Dude, it's giant. Look at that's my homie Tark. Tark's like six foot, and this thing is, dude. It's huge. And these are all over Egypt. Actually, there's a bunch of this. But look at how straight and aligned his face is. You know. It's crazy. A lot of these Egyptian statues, they look like that. But when you look at like what's like our, you know, statue of David, when we look at our like in the modern era, you know, he's got a little bit of his he probably looks pretty symmetrical. But, you know, he's leaning on one hip. It's kind of more, you know, he's looking in different directions. It it's it's phenomenal, right? It's beautiful work of art. It's pretty dope. I agree. But, like, dude, look at this. Bro, that looks like a laser computer cut generated machine. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, it's insane. It's crazy. But, anyway, all I'm trying to say is that, like, in Western medicine, healthcare, I love it. We're, it's so important. It's very necessary. But I think it's so key to pay attention to what maybe some other uh, alternative medicines are saying and at least what ancient civilizations have kind of you know proven on their own a little bit and especially just if we look at yoga it's important to take care of the way you breathe and, and focusing on different sides of your face your nose I mean this is a straight up s study that came out of uh, what this come out of right here PLOS 1 um, the National Institute of Health you know, these are some big researchers looking at this and they're like noticing that the people that had different flow and a, a dominant flow through one nostril, usually this represented some asymmetry in brain function. And to me, this feels like I would say just anecdotally, it seems very similar to what I feel like I have noticed about me 
uh, and most of my life, like I think um, it's one of those things you have to pay very deeply attention to. I wouldn't have like even thought about this as an idea until I basically fell, fell off this motorcycle. But bro, like what's crazy is since I fell off, cause it was my, my right hip, my right leg, it's like my, I started walking with a limp and what's kind of strange then is it's like when I'm walking with the limp because I'm trying to heal this. <laughs> so my idea was that like I felt like I lost kind of like some, I guess I would just say consciousness of like this area of my face in my vision. Because when you're limping, it's like you don't really keep, you know, your, your eyes just sort of change a little bit. This is obviously like very like my minute by minute, second by second things that I'm paying attention to. Um, so maybe if this sounds crazy to you, maybe you haven't really thought about what your eyeballs are doing every second. Sometimes we think about like, oh my, I'm not afraid or like not afraid, but like I can look anywhere at any time. But think about when you are in the grocery store, think about when you're kind of in an awkward interaction with like, you know, kind of a new friend, like you can kind of feel this like density um, in looking a certain direction. You can feel the gravity of that. And so I just noticed when I started limping more, it's like, it's like this part of my nose, my right nose, my flow was not as good. And I was just started noticing it because I was already training breath work. And I felt like it was kind of a little more even before this, but maybe I just, maybe it was so subtle. I didn't, I couldn't really tell. And then now through <laughs> the fall, I could tell dude. And so, <laughs> Dude, this picture is hilarious, dude, but I had to take it because I had some I have some great ideas that I did with this, you know, I actually because I felt like it's I once I started paying attention to this more through my training, I felt like, OK, I think there's something that I'm not doing with the right side of my face more. I need to, like, speak more evenly. I need to breathe a little bit more through my right nose. So I literally would tape over my <laughs> left nostril and then bite on something with my right jaw so I could get like a deeper flow. I'm not sure if you guys know this, but when you are smiling or when you are like, you know, your face is scrunched, you're getting your nasal passage actually changes. Okay. You'll, if you, when you play around this with this, you'll feel it. So it's just wild, you know, and I felt like I was almost like connecting some like deeper arcing human story throughout this because I'll get deeper into that on this on this uh, YouTube channel and probably on content later on but bro look at it's like I literally am wearing this uh, <laughs> I'm wearing this thing that covers my eyes for like sleeping right sleeping mask that I got from Egypt air and what is it on the right eye is Horus the, the, eye, the falcon eye of Horus and I'm not sure if you guys know like a little bit deeper of that mythology, um, the eye of Horus and Set. So like, I mean, this is deeper like Egyptian mythology, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> I can't remember if this says, if it says the right eye or not. Let's see what it says. It might, I mean, it just depends, right? Either way. It's like there was this rivalry and um, Horus basically his brother Set is kind of more connected to like shadow energies or something like that. He's a little bit more what we would think would be like negative. But, you know, as we know in like yin and yang and like kind of in general with duality that we basically aren't that... Uh, um, we aren't aware of how great things are and, and until we're like aware of how bad things are. Um, okay. So what does this say? All right. I don't know if it does. It doesn't say the eye here, but if it was the left or the right eye, it doesn't say it, but still the idea is that he was not seeing something about the way civilization was being ran. Cause I believe that they were like technic, they were saying that they were like in some sort of golden age in Egypt or like, that's the idea in the mythology is that uh you know horus and osiris they were kind of running shit and everything was they thought everything was cool but then set came in and ripped out his eye and then like chopped osiris into 14 pieces or whatever uh, maybe if you guys have looked into this or whatever you might know a little bit more about it but it kind of essentially almost like highlighted that horus had some like uh some there was some stuff he wasn't seeing 
he was turning a blind eye to some things in his reality possibly and so now once this eye was taken he had no choice but to see what was conscious you know what i'm saying or what what was in front of his face and it, this is like you know not just like literally what he was seeing <laughs> like more about like what are you perceiving about your civilization your reality so whatever i mean that's a deeper rabbit hole but it was just so weird to me that like as i was doing this silly like little experiment here with learning how to practice more with my right nostril and i'm studying pratyama I'm, I'm looking at western medicine on this too okay i'm looking at medicine and studies and they're talking about how the nasal cycle alternates you know so i'm gonna get deeper into that stuff on this channel but i just wanted to bring that up and just raise some really interesting uh, perspectives on that because i thought that was just crazy you know so as you know on my channel i'm right now working through strengthening um all of my right hip i have this thing going on right here ever since i fell and I'm going to be sharing how breath work and CrossFit and, and uh, Olympic weightlifting, especially the snatch, I notice ha is really crucial for me getting back to where I need to be. And uh, Is your bot? And so we're going to be documenting a lot of that journey, right? I need to get back to this. This is where I could do my body weight on snatch. And right now, I'm basically right... <laughs> right here like uh, I can probably do a little bit more than this but I have so much like pain right now that it's kind of strange so you can see my right foot when I'm at the bottom right now my alignment is not really great my right foot I need to be able to have more groin mobility I need more strength on the outside glute medius I need more strength on the muscle that connects the spine to the hip, which is the quadratus lumborum. When I have more strength and mobility there, this foot will be able to kick out better. My snatch will get a lot stronger and things will be chill. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, uh, that's what I need to share with y'all today. And I'll, I'll show um, any things that I feel like any big threads, I'll like to connect them through um always the modern science and bring in some flavors from the alternative medicine approaches that exist out there and maybe see if i can find evidence from ancient cultures and civilizations about how this has already been kind of you know focused on in the past so anyway y'all are great take care uh be able to like and subscribe to this channel save with your homies and uh stay tuned for more videos coming here soon